blessings and when we benefit financially or in any other way, then we should say Alhamdulillah Rabbilah. Then we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we forget that every single breath that you take, every single step that we take, every time that you move your hand, every time that you open your eye, every time that your ear hears and your eyes see, it is by the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, our entire lives should be spent in shukr. Our entire lives should be spent thanking Allah. But the problem is that nowadays people have become so lost in dunya that we make more shikwa and shikayat and less shukr. More time is spent in complaining. And I said this before. People go on asking, why me? Why did I become ill? Why did I lose financially? Why did somebody say something about me? And we should turn the table sometime and ask, why not? Why not? Why not? Because we have to look at our lives and understand that certain things happen because of our actions there is a reaction. Every action creates a reaction. Positive or negative. Every action creates a reaction. And on the other hand we should say that certain things happen because it is a test from Allah. So when there is good and when you are in calamity on both sides, Alhamdulillah Rabbilah. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because sometimes in the calamity that you face you do not see Allah's mercy. You do not see Allah's mercy. And very simple, when a man finds out that he has some bad in inverted commas, dreaded disease. Or if you find out that you are about to incur some major loss. Or if you need to do something and you cannot fulfill it, you need to pay somebody. I'm going to use the financial example. And you cannot do it on time. What happens? What do people usually do at that time? They start waking up for Tahajjud Salah. Spending time on the Musalla. Oh Allah, tomorrow my blood test results will come, let it not be cancer. May Allah protect us from all the diseases. May it not be this. Do we do it or don't we do it? Let's be honest. Now, in one sense, you are troubled, you are stressed because all the symptoms are showing, but you're still saying if the result comes, it should not be that. And at the same time you are saying, I am in discomfort and I am in taklif. But at that time make shukr as well. Because of knowing that there can be that risk to you, you put yourself on the musalla for an hour that you would never do on any other day. You put your head in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than you would do on any other day. For as long as you are ill, you weep in the court of Allah for shifa. Would you be able to do that on another day? No. no. Because we take everything else for granted. We take everything else for granted until it does not happen. <laughs> and that is why it is so important that at all times, har har me alhamdulillah. Every time, in every stage, you should say alhamdulillah ya rabbil alameen. You should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so important. Do you know the great scholars have said some beautiful things on this discussion. And one of them was Hal Sayyidina Shaykh Saadi Shirazi radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hal Sayyidina Imam Shaykh Saadi radiallahu very beautifully says, he says that every hair on my body, not just on my head, every hair 
on my body is a ni'mat of Allah. Every hair on my body is a ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says every hair on the body is a ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how is it even possible for me to make sugar individually for every hair that is on my body that Allah has given me? How will you do it? If you talk, and in reality if you think, if you just start making sugar for every hair that is on your body, your entire life will pass. Just for the hair that is on your body. Look at these fine hairs on your hand. How many of us going to sit and count? Not possible. Now imagine if you have to make sugar for every hair. Individually, Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Shaykh Saadi Radhi Wasallam said, individually. Your entire life will go. What, does he try, what is he trying to say? He is saying, make sugar, don't think that I have done enough. Don't think that I have been grateful for everything that I have done. It's not possible because you cannot see the bounties of Allah in just one single hair on your body. You cannot see it. You cannot see the countless blessings that Allah gives in that one eye that we have. The one eye. How much of ni'mat and how much of barakat and how much of blessings are in the one eye? A person cannot really understand. But still we drown, your, we drown ourselves in the love of the dunya. We do it. Because we think dunya is everything. We think name, fame, pride is everything. But these are all things that will remain behind with us in this dunya. It will remain behind. We will be gone. What are we doing? We are doing a deal. We think we are doing some kind of deal where we are purchasing something that is beneficial for us. What? This dunya. This dunya is not beneficial for you if you do not use it in accordance with the command of Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa If you spend your worldly life like how say Adam radiallahu anh, spent his life, then it is a life worth living. If you spend it like how sarkar e khaja Ghanibun Nawaz spent his life, it is a life worth living. If you spend it like Allah Hadrat Ali Mulbarkat spent his life, it is a life worth living. Because they spent their lives in a manner that their hereafter was already waiting and welcoming them. Okay? Now let's you and I look at our lives. Alhamdulillah, we must make shukar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Look, let's, let's do a quick, a quick, quick one. Just for understanding. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah Ta'ala created me insan. Alhamdulillah, Allah created us insan. Alhamdulillah, creating us insan, He blessed us even more than He gave us Iman. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we are Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we believe in Ghosi A'adham. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we believe that the awliya can assist us. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we believe in the commands of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we should. How much of sugar? Today there are those who call themselves Muslims, but they are killing people all over the world. Islam does not condone terrorism in any way. And there is no place for it in Islam, in Din Islam. Be it in New Zealand, be it in Sri Lanka or any part of the world. Killing of innocent people is not accepted in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is that deen does not, that does not accept the killing of an animal without reason. This is that deen. This is the deen of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Today in Sri Lanka, because of what has happened there, all the masjids have been closed for Jummah today. Tell me that this shaitani behavior of these people, has it benefited the Muslims or hurt the Muslims? Have you heard anywhere that masjids have to be closed? Is this spreading Allah's deen? This is harming the believers. We do not need to follow the ways of this extreme dushmanan Islam. The ulama and the sunnah have been warning you about the bad mashabs for ages now. Yes, sir. Have you not been warned? Yes, People didn't listen. Ab ye dekhne ko mil raha hai. This call came from Bareli Sharif more than 100 years ago. When Allah Hadrat Ali Mulbarakat said, stay away from them, so they will plunge you into destruction. 
Is it not happening? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen We are followers of the only Allah Just today, today the newspapers of Sri Lanka have bad testimony That from those that were responsible for this destruction there People have now been found after in other cells And documents have been found to say that the next target was all the mosques in Sri Lanka That had mazars in them Are you understanding? That is why we say Ahl Sunnat, Ahl Sunnat ki saath rahe. Stay away from the Padmas Hats. They are destructing your Iman, your Deen and they are destructing the dunya also. Causing fitna in this dunya and corruption in this dunya. There is no place for this in Deen Mustafa. There is no place for this in Islam whatsoever. We must do what is commanded by Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must do what is commanded by Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we must make shukar. That great personalities that say the Allah Hadith Radimul Barakat Radiallahu showed us the way. You must make sure that we are beggars at the door of Sankari Khaja Ghanibun Nawaz Radiallahu Ta'ala. We must make sure that personalities like Huzur Sayyidi Taj Sharia and Huzur Muhammad Sayyid Kabir showed us light in this era. We must thank Allah for this. Otherwise, we would have been lost where Allah knows. Eh? But sad state of the Muslim woman today because of those who claim to be Muslim. Naan se baat nahi. Doesn't work just by name. You have to do what the beloved Rasul commanded. You have to follow in the footsteps of the merciful Prophet. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is Wama Arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin. Who he who Allah has sent as rahmat unto the world. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have to think and understand the direction that needs to be taken. To protect our children and our youth from this kind of destruction. And what do you have to do? You have to put in their hearts the true love for Allah and His Rasul. Put into the hearts of the awliya Allah and they will follow their footsteps. And they will see what they did and they will do that and not that which is contrary to that. They will see how the beloveds lived. And they will follow the beloveds ways. It is very important in this era that we understand this. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Back to our discussion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us everything. Make shukar in the court of Allah. Make shukar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the entire universe. Allah Rabbu Nizat is the creator of the entire universe. And you think that only this earth is here? What do we know more? The moon and Mars and whatever, and Jupiter and, 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 and everything else. That is wrong. That's all you know. Hazrat Wahab bin radiallahu anh says in one rewire that don't talk about one and two. There are approximately 18,000 domains, alams, which Allah has created. And Allah is Rabbul Alameen. And Allah is Rabbul Alameen and Rasul Ifaq is Rahmatullah. The Haq says that there are 350 alams. Hazrat Sayyidina, one rewire. Hazrat Wahab bin Munabbi says that they are 18,000 They are different, different riwayats And Hazrat Sayyidina Kaab Ahbar says that they cannot be counted Subhanallah. Think about it How much of sugar we must make that we are in this alam? Do you know why? Why should you make sugar that you are in this alam? Not in any one of the other thousands of alams Because the beloved Nabi is in this alam Because the beloved Nabi is in this alam, har alam ki rahmat hai, koi alam meh hai jate hai. Har alam ki rahmat hai, koi alam meh hai jate hai. Ye unki meherbani hai ki ye alam pasand. He loved this place. Madina is on this dunya. So he was leaving just now. Shukar, make shukar for this. We do not see at times when Allah's, Allah's mercy comes upon us. We do not see. Sometimes it happens such that your life is saved by Allah's mercy and you don't even know it. So make shukar even for that which you do not know. And I'm going to give you an example and I'm going to end it today with this. I'm going to give you one example of this. And the example is from a blessed personality known as Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Dhul Noon Misri Radiallahu. Hazrat Sayyidina Imam Dhul Noon Misri. I'm going to give you an example. I want you to listen carefully. How Allah saves sometimes you without you even know it. 
Hazrat Sayyidina Zunnun Misni radiyallahu ta'ala and one day he was a little bit uncomfortable and he needed some peace, some privacy. So Hazrat Zunnun Misni radiyallahu and decided on that day to walk along the river Nile. To walk around along the river Nile. On the shores of the banks of the, the river Nile. And when Hazrat Zunnun Misri radiyallahu decided to walk on the banks of the river Nile, while walking, because it was his way of relieving his stress, to walk beside the river and make the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was walking in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Zunnun Misri saw something. Please listen carefully. He saw something. Do you know what he saw? He saw a scorpion. He saw a scorpion. Now when you see a scorpion, what do you do? Stay far away. If it stings you, detrimental effect to death. If it's poisonous, that poisonous. But when you see a scorpion, you will stay away. But Zunun Misri, when he saw the scorpion, I'm, I'm giving you the essence of the, of, the, of, the, of the narration. When he saw the scorpion, he saw that the scorpion, he saw that the scorpion was running at a speed. It was rushing. He was not paying attention to anything. It was just going in one direction. So Hazrat Zunnun Misri Allah said, I was surprised by this. I was taken aback by this scorpion that was, it was in a hurry to go somewhere. Scorpion was in a hurry to go somewhere. So I followed it. I said, let me see where it's going. So Zunnun Misri Allah says, I followed it and it's, I saw it run on the banks of the river with great speed. And I, I tracked it and I followed it. And then it say, he says, I saw it came to a spot at the banks where there was a frog. Where there was a frog. And I saw that the scorpion climbed onto the head of a frog. It climbed onto the head of the frog. What the scorpion did, it, climbed, it was running on the banks. Then it climbed onto the head of a frog. And the frog started to swim in the river Nile with the scorpion on its head. He says, I got onto a boat and I asked for the boat, for the person on the boat, the sailor, the mullah, or mullah. I asked for him to follow the frog. So he followed the frog with the scorpion sitting in, on his head. And he crossed that part of the river and came onto the other bank and the scorpion jumped off. How did the frog know that he needed to give the scorpion a ride? How did the frog know that it needed to give the scorpion a ride? What, who made it wait there? Who made it wait there? So that the scorpion needed to cross the river. How did it know that the scorpion needed to cross the river? People want to talk with them about the prophets and the Ambiya have knowledge of things. A frog has knowledge that a scorpion is going to come and take a ride with it. Where did it come from? Allah. Allah. The scorpion gets onto the head of the frog, the frog crosses the river. Scorpion gets off. So Nun Misri is on the boat, he gets off on the banks, follows the scorpion. The scorpion goes towards the tree, there is a young boy sleeping under the tree. There is a young man, youngster, youth, sleeping under the tree. And coming down from the tree is a venomous serpent. Coming down from the tree is what? A poisonous snake, snake sound. A venomous serpent is coming down from the tree and is about to strike the young boy and the scorpion leaps towards the snake and attacks the snake. And the scorpion, Zunun Misri says that the scorpion and the snake fight a battle. Kill both the die. And the young man is not even aware of it that his life was in danger. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil You are not even aware sometimes. And your Rabb saves you from that. How did the, did the scorpion know that that boy is sleeping under the tree and he will be attacked by a venomous snake? Allah can send by His will a scorpion over the river Nile on the head of a frog to save a sleeping man from a serpent and give its life for the life of that man. Allah cannot save you. Allah cannot save you if you have Ishqa Rasul in your heart. Allah is the protector. But we have to do what Allah commands. 
we have on this walk here should make us understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of everything. Nothing is hidden from your Rabbi. And Allah is the planner. We all plan, but the best plan is that which is made by Allah. But we must have yakin, And we must make shukr. Every moment in our life, learn this waqiya of the, of the scorpion and the frog. And you will understand, and if you look at it carefully, it will, un, it will, it will unveil and open doors of spiritualism which is, will be things that will boggle your mind. We need to think. We need to think positively. We need to think about the beauty of what we hear and what the great scholars have written. This has been written in the, in, in, in the commentary of Ruhul Bayat. And we will see how important it is for us to put our heads in sajda. That is why when you come to masjid on a Friday or you go to perform any salah, it is not just a formality. You should make shukr that from the millions of people I got a chance to put my head in the ground on the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I got to say subhana rabbi ala I got to say subhana rabbi ala azim. I got to make takbir and say Allahu Akbar. This is Allah's blessing. We miss this. We don't count these blessings because it happens so often in our lives. Because every Friday we go to mosque, but know the value of this Juma and of coming to the mosque from those who could not go to the masjid. Think about it. Or those who were killed in New Zealand while performing this. Think about these things and understand how important and how blessed it is for us to value these moments. Allah give us the topic of shukr and bless us with the topic of sabr as well. Allah keep us with iman. Let us keep us well with iman. Those that are healing, come to Allah, grant them shifai, come and say the ajit. Those that are passing the ajit, Allah exalt them in Jannah and Ayyad. Allah <coughs> raise the status of our blessed Mashayat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afford us the tawfiq to understand his deed. May Allah give us the summary of deed. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us with Iman. Let us give us all with Iman. Wa malin barab salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa